the transit system in Baltimore is broken and we're going to fix it. But with the Red Line project dead in the water now, how do you fix the transportation problems at Blake, our city? On this TV Hill, 11 TV Hill, hear from real people about what they say needs to happen next, as well as two community activists and the MTA who will weigh in with what's next. Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Newton. Welcome to 11 TV Hill. Tackling transit, one potential fix, just one of them, to the transportation issues in Baltimore will never leave the station. The troubled Red Line project was 15 years in the making, but depending on who you ask, its future was never certain. Each day by rail and road, millions choose mass transit as their way of getting around Baltimore. But some communities have felt underserved. Enters the Red Line, a plan dating back to 2002. The 14 mile span was set to join west and east by light rail, with Woodlawn Social Security Complex on the west and the Johns Hopkins Bayview campus to the east. Designers of the Red Line touted an intermodal connection joining current bus routes, the Central Light Rail Line, and a marked commuter line. But getting there would have plenty of stops, both physically and financially. The $2.2 billion project, partially funded by Washington and the state, drew criticism for its cost, its route, and the expense of digging at least one tunnel. And in the end, that may have done it in. The current proposal makes no sense whatsoever to almost anyone. It doesn't make any economic sense at all. Newly elected Governor Larry Hogan called the Red Line project wasteful and irresponsible. It was one of two rail projects on the drawing board when he took office. A purple line between Bethesda, New Carrollton, and Prince George's County would be spared, but with Hogan slashing its state funding significantly. Frustration grew from City Hall to Congress. Lawmakers met to remedy Baltimore's transit trouble. We want the red line, but if he's got something else that's going to help people move from place to place and get to work and uh, be able to and generate jobs in our city, um, then I'm, I'm all ears. The promise from Annapolis has been an improved bus system for Baltimore, with state leaders saying upgrading MTA bus service in the city will work better than a red line and actually impact more neighborhoods along with better roads and bridges. But is that enough? So to give you some perspective into this issue, it's important to point out just how many people use mass transit across the country. According to the American Public Transportation Association, in 2014, travelers took 10.8 billion trips on mass transit. That's the highest it's been in 58 years. Now, since 1995, ridership nationally, it's up 39 percent, and the numbers are trending up locally as well. In 2014, commuter rail ridership in Baltimore increased 2.2 percent. But how about this? Bus ridership took the biggest jump, 6.8% increase in the number of people riding buses. Joining us now is Paul Comfort, Administrator for the MTA, Brian O'Malley with the Central Maryland Transportation Alliance, and Rich Hall from Citizens Planning and Housing Association. Thank you all for joining us today. A quick thing we do want to talk about, we know that the red line is the big story, but we'll try to make that just part of the discussion today. Uh, and the governor weighed in uh, recently about the red line in the weekend, uh, the Baltimore Sun edition, mentioning transportation as one of a handful of things he wants to overall. He says this, quote, improving transportation in Baltimore is critical. In the next part of my vision, the city somehow manages to function on a mismatch of disconnected rail lines and nonsensical bus routes that don't connect people to jobs. A lot from the governor there, Paul. He was a, he was a tough father on this one. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about that, and, and where do you think we stand as far as public transportation in Baltimore? Well, thanks, and thanks for having me here sure. today. Yes, uh, I agree with the governor that uh, our system, I've been here about 100 days now okay. at the MTA, and what I've seen, I've been out listening, listening to groups like Brian's and other groups, mm -hmm. and riding the vehicles, and looking at our routes, and our routes on the bus system definitely need to be improved. Um, we have about 380,000 people a day that ride our service, 380,000 mm -hmm. trips. Two-thirds of those are on bus. Uh, so about a quarter million rides a day on bus, about 35,000 rides a day on the metro system, 25,000 on the light rail system. And the, the bus system does not effectively interconnect mm -hmm. the other modes of MARC, metro, and light rail. We've got to have a better connection, better linkage to people into those systems and out to where the jobs are today. We haven't had a new what they call a run cut in over 10 years mm -hmm. in Baltimore City, a new real fresh look at the bus system, the routes, and so that's what we're doing now. Gentlemen, I see you nodding your heads over there. What do you think? This disconnected bus route to other parts of transit, is that hurting us the most? I think that, that we're talking about a system, not one project or another, but we want a, a system that makes a strong region. And so that means connecting people to jobs. I'm glad that came up. Mm -hmm. That means interconnecting the different modes so that people have options. We're not stuck with one, only one option, regardless of you know how congested the roads may be. 
um, or how, how you know much fuel costs or anything like that. It's it's will be stronger and more resilient if we have an interconnected system where you can take the bus to the train or drive to a park and ride, use your bike. Um, with a bus or with a train ride, et cetera. Sure, and Rich, you've had some town hall meetings. You've had people who come to you and say, listen, for our community, we may feel underserved. What, what is key for them? What would they like to see change to make the bus, the, the metro, the MART train work better for them? Well, uh, first, I want to thank you, Jason, for having us. Sure. Uh, and um, I think a lot of the, the challenges that the existing system has, which um, had and will continue to have challenges regardless of the red line. The red line would have addressed many of them. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a silver bullet, but there's reason why that was studied for over 10 years. Part of a uh, very thoughtful rail plan is put together over 10 years ago um, and made it through a highly competitive federal new starts program. So, you know, that still is something to recognize uh, what we lost from that, and certainly um, the funds that would have gone to it. Um, went out to roads that will, and some, some of them will help uh, uh, push sprawl in certain parts of the state. So, um, you know, we have to focus on that issue and what we can do going forward for how we can prevent those types of bad transportation decisions going forward, losing the project, and not just sort of going to the next best project, but losing the funding that was supported that project. Um, so that's something we've heard loud and clear. So we want to make that. Um, we want to articulate that point, but we also want to move forward as well and working uh, with, with Paul and others um, to, to fix what we have uh, and making them more efficient, that type of thing. But I think moving forward, it's gonna, still going to take resources, and we're hearing that through the meetings we've had. We need to invest in that system and make it as efficient as it can be with existing resources, but we're going to have to add resources to it to improve it and to better link um, the bus system to other modes. Sure. Uh, so we're hearing that uh, um, consistently, um, and our focus is more community-based planning uh, in the city and in the Baltimore region. Um, one person I want to highlight from an event we had last Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, Cynthia Shaw. Uh, she is the president of Lenhurst Community Association, um, and she spoke at our event. She's one of the last speakers. She's raised her hand and, and spoke up. Um, she's been in the community many, many years, decades, and she. Um, talked about how hard she worked uh, with the Red Line staff to not only talk about where the line would go, better connect them to jobs and education and well, other things, but also um, how she had worked hard with her community to work on things around the station, sure. landscaping, better retail. Well, let's talk about the project yeah. a little bit and moving east to west. And, and Paul, you know, as you look at the map, you see the light rail running north and south. You see where the subway heads, but there's difficulty uh, with that rapid transit moving east and west. A lot of folks were, were thinking that this could be the, the, the savior to what the problem may be. The governor has a plan. I don't know if you know what that plan is. If you do, please tell us. Uh, if not, tell me what you think will work. Right. Well, um, I do agree that the system needs to be realigned. Uh, the old system that's in place now. Some of the bus routes go back 40 years. Oh. They haven't been readjusted in 40 years, and a lot of bus stops have been put in place as a result of political decisions. You know, somebody calls up and says, uh, "My constituents need to stop here." But the whole system uh, needs to be uh, uh, looked at with all the data we have now. As you you may be aware that there was a two-year project called the Bus Network Improvement Project mm -hmm. that happened before I got here, and we've taken all that data that had input from 1,100 people on it. We've been out meeting with groups, listening to passenger groups and transit advocacy groups, and they do say that there needs to be. Um, uh, it shouldn't take 90 minutes to do on a bus what it takes 20 minutes to do in a car. Sure. And uh, so the, the routes definitely need to be restructured and to modernize them about where people want to go today. And that does mean some east-west connections that don't have to go into downtown business district to get there. And so we're looking at all of that. The governor and the secretary will be making an announcement, I think, in October about um, kind of revamping the whole system. And I think that you'll see some of that in there. Is there benefit to rail? Do you, do you, as you, you know, channel and look through what Annapolis could do, would you like to see that kind of project? Project or, or can bus do the job? Well, we've got rail infrastructure in place now. To me, the issue is it's, we're not, it's not interconnected. We're not okay. linking people, um, you know, to the route. The bus routes themselves need to better interlink with the, the infrastructure that's already in place. That's a great place to start, and that's where we're going to be starting, I think. Talk connectivity as far as rail goes. I know you're a rail guy. What, what benefit could we get from light or heavy rail, do you right. think? I, I object a little bit to being called a rail guy because I, I support the whole system. Sure, I sure, want the sure. whole system to work. And I think Having an east-west 
line in the rail system is something that this region has been envisioning for since the 60s. Mm -hmm. we, had a, we had a Baltimore Regional Transit System plan in 1968. We built two of the lines. That's our subway and our, and our central light rail. But there was always an idea for an east-west spine, and it, it just makes sense if you think about it. The, right now, you can meet people who live in the city for years and didn't know we had a subway, because if you don't happen to need to go that sure. one route. But in other cities, everyone knows about the, the, the train system, because it goes to most places that you want to you wanna get to. And the east-west line would have added that. But that was never to say that that was going to solve all our problems. We need to update the bus system, as, as Mr. Comfort said. and and th those bus routes have to respond to where the job opportunities are now. And we know that a lot of mid-skill jobs, good jobs for people be with between a high school education and a four-year college degree, are a lot of times around the periphery. They're not right in the central business district. And we have a, a, a transit system that does a great job getting you downtown, but not as good of a job moving people from the neighborhoods to those those job centers. Sure. That, that's true. I mean, just today after this, I'm going to meet with the commander of Fort Meade Base, and we're talking about what's the best way we can serve where the jobs are today, like you were saying. The jobs today aren't all in the downtown business district. Okay. The jobs are in the suburbs. We need to have better service to Columbia, better service to the BWI airport, that area where jobs are now, to Fort Meade. And so uh, taking a look at where the jobs are now and how to get people there in an efficient way, that's also what we need to do here at the MTA. You told us a little bit of, of what you've been doing with the subways, and it sounds like you are working to help to rehab some of those. So most cars have been around for a while, and that was interesting to hear. Talk yes. a little bit about that project. So. Yeah, so uh, the state has in its capital transportation plan over the next six years, uh, $3.7 billion of improvements to our transit system. And part of that includes replacing all 90 of our subway cars for the metro system and all the signaling inside the tunnels. And that's going to be a half billion dollars just to do that. We're also rehabbing our light rail uh, trains and uh, getting lots of brand new buses in here. So the investment is being made uh, under this governor's administration to move forward and make sure our capital infrastructure is in place to deliver outstanding service to folks. Rich, that's a start. If you had all the money in the world, where would you put it in this transit system? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to, uh, you know, keep the existing system working and to tweak it, refine it to, to work. Um, but we also need, I mean, um, Paul, both Paul and Brian talked about getting people to jobs. And the jobs are downtown. There's a lot of jobs downtown. But there's also um, those in, in the suburbs, whether it's Fort Meade or um, big retail places like Arundel Mills. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of talk about people um, in, in need of entry-level jobs and how hard it is to get from West Baltimore, for example, out to somewhere like Arundel Mills or other places in Howard County. Um, and it's going to take, you know, creative thought how to make that happen as well as investment uh, to make it work. That was one of the issues that came up in some um, polling we did at our workshop last week where people could use their cell phones and respond to different questions we gave them was getting people to jobs, even suburban jobs. Um, so that's important. We also need to better connect the different modes uh, within, within the city, within inside the beltway, so within the urban cores. It's not only commuting, mm -hmm. but it's getting people to be able to move better, like we've been talking about before, especially east-west um, within Baltimore and within Baltimore County, to get um, you know along the, the, that line was picked for a reason that of the red line uh, going all up from Social Security all the way to Bayview, Hopkins Bayview, and all the way across, um, so you can make these connections, whether it's subway, mark, bus lines, light rail. Uh, so there's there's a many things to, to invest in. The main thing is to invest into the system uh, to help improve it. Sure.